Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Parker High School's production of White Christmas. At this time, please turn off all cell phones and other electronic devices, as well as refrain from any recording or photography of any kind. Also, I just want to make you aware that tonight Bob Wallace is played by Jordan Buck and Phil Davis will be played by Sullivan Salvi. And now, sit back and enjoy White Christmas. Now I've got a million dollar proposition for you. If there's anything worse than fighting war on Christmas Eve, it's gotta be our final act. Their jokes are lousy, but their dancing is even worse. Here they are, Captain Bob Wallace and Private Phil Davis. Private Davis. Yes, Captain Wallace. Remember, don't sing until you see the whites of their eyes. I see them. Then sing. Happy holiday. Happy holiday, while the merry bells keep ringing, may your every wish come true. Happy holiday, have happy holiday, may the calendar keep ringing, happy holidays to you. That's quite a crowd we got out there, what do you think? Looks like they've been through a war. They have been through a war. Well, then they look pretty good. <laughs> While the merry bells keep ringing, may your every wish come true. Captain Wallace. Yes, Private Davis. Do you, long, do you know how long it's been size and a girl? How long is that, Private? I don't know. We're dancing awful close. <laughs> While the merry bells keep ringing, happy holidays, happy holidays to you. We've certainly had fun tonight, haven't we, fellas? Now look, I know you're all messing home. So here's one to put you right back in front of that fireplace. Sung by our very own Captain Bob Wallace. I'm 
dreaming of a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to know Where the treetops glisten And children listen to hear sleigh bells in the snow. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas with every Christmas card I write. May your days be merry and bright, and may all your Christmases be white. Attention! General Waverly, sir. sir. What the devil is going on here? Don't you men know that there's a war on? Yes, sir. But it's Christmas Eve, sir. Attention! Got... Take off those ridiculous bells. Just a little yuletide here, sir. Jingle bells and so on. Davis, if you could march as well as you could jingle, this war would be over. Yes, sir. Captain Wallace, I believe you are out of uniform. <laughs> yes, sir. Dismissed. Yes, Thank sir. You, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. And gentlemen, Thank you for the fine show. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas, sir. So, Christmas Eve, 1944. And I don't see any flying reindeer in this little corner of hell tonight. Gentlemen, I do have some news for you. The Army has ordered me stateside as of 0, 0100 hours to get this German buckshot taken out of my leg. And if you don't give the new CO as much as you gave Henry Waverly, I may come back and fight for the enemy. It has been my great privilege to lead you men. Johnson, Sanchez, Pirelli, the 151st Division is doing America proud. Maybe in a year, we'll be celebrating the holidays around a fire with our families and friends. 10 years from now, 1954, who knows where we'll be. Let's pray it's a better world. Soldiers, Merry Christmas. Welcome back to the Ed Sullivan Show, brought to you by the 1954 Lincoln Mercury and Oxidol detergent, the wash day cleanser for that all-American purity. Use Oxidol. Purity. And now, America's favorite song and dance team, recording artists and Broadway stars, Bob Wallace and Phil Davis. Happy holiday, happy holiday, while the merry bells keep ringing, may your every wish come true. Happy holiday. Happy holiday. Happy holiday, may the calendar keep bringing happy holidays, happy holidays to you. Come get together, let the dance floor feel your leather, step as lightly as a feather, let yourself go. Come hit the timber. Loosen up and start to limber Can't you hear that hot marimba? Let yourself go Let yourself go Relax and let yourself go Relax, you got yourself tied up in a knot The night is cold but the music's hot So come on, come on, cuddle closer Don't you dare to answer no sir Put your banker, clerk and grocer Let yourself go Let yourself go Relax and let yourself go Relax, you got yourself tied up in a knot The night is cold but the music's hot So come, cuddle closer Don't you dare to answer no 
no sir. Butcher, banker, clerk, and grocer, let us all go. Tried our new show. We'll see you in Florida. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Great show, Mr. Wallace. Uh, thanks, Tess. Hey, would you tell Scooter to pick up the tempo on that dance break? And you, I told you to work on the second chorus, not the second chorus, girl. Guilty as charged. Telegram, telegram, signature. Have you got the train ticket set up for tonight? Yes, you and Mr. Davis have a drawing room on the 1 a.m. to Miami. Great. The kids in the chorus follow you down in two days for rehearsals. Great, thanks, Tess. Yep. Christmas in Florida. I like that. 18 holes and a swim in the sunshine. You're gonna wanna move there. Hey, hey, the 151st comes through again. Captain Wallace, Private Davis, Corporal Sheldrake. Gee, I wish I was back in the army. You think all TV producers got started by finagling black market nylons? This one did. Boys, I've got a million dollar proposition for you. Ed wants you back on the show after the Florida tryout. You do a piece of your new review, and we broadcast it. What do you say? Bob, what do you say? It's a million dollar proposition. I'll send you all the bump. And hey, have a Merry Christmas, fellas. Merry Christmas, Ralph. Merry Christmas. Oh, Billy Dilly! Once we're in Florida, are we gonna work on that new quote, unquote, routine, unquote? Yeah, baby, yeah, I got it all figured out. That last routine did wonders for my sacroiliac. Hiya, Bobby, see you in Florida. And remember, use Oxydol for purity. <laughs> Have you ever considered giving the female sex a breather? 
What, get show business? I don't know, it's getting older faster. Me or your jokes? Hey, why don't we go for a drink for the train? We're about this great little club downtown. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Skip the scam, Phil. What do you really want from me? Okay. Remember Mess Sergeant Frankie Haynes? Freckle-faced Haynes? The dog-faced boy? Yeah. His sisters are doing a show in some joint. We said we wanted a new sister act and for this a new isn't review. This is some scheme to hook me up with another belly dancing rocket scientist? It's a way to find a sister act. Of course, you could always bring Rita and Rhoda along. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ever since we're in the army, you've been trying to hook me up with something female. Ten years You now. wanna know why, Let Bob? me finish. Big ones, small ones, dumpy ones. As long as it's wearing a skirt and it's still breathing, you trot it out. Try and put a little romance in your life, Bob. I want you to go out and have fun. Remember fun? We should just stop being Bob Wallace Incorporated and fall in love. I want you to get married, have nine kids, and I have a house so I can go home and get a massage or something. You know, look, Bob, maybe you've got a point there about home, but come on, most of the kids we meet, they're young, they're ambitious. They don't want to settle down and raise a family. As for love, it's too much like the weather. You lost me. Unpredictable, irresponsible, unbelievable, unreliable Ever since the world began Our Cupid and the weather man Love and the weather, birds of a feather Can't be depended upon One day it's sunny, next day the sunshine has gone Love and the weather, always together Planning another surprise Bringing the raindrops just like the tears to your eyes Any guy with love close by is cozy and warm A love walks out and kicks a guy right out of the warm Into a storm Moonlight romances have to take chances That's what you learn with the dawn Love and the weather can't be depended upon I told Jimmy to put them at a table right down front I'm so excited, I hope I don't stare at them during the number Well, I still don't understand it Oh, buddy, will you settle down? We've actually got Wallace and Davis coming to see us Yes but how did Wallace and Davis ever find out about Betty and Judy Haynes? I, uh... I smell a rat here. Maybe the same rat who told the club owner we're his cousins. I didn't say cousins. I said we went to kindergarten together. Uh, haven't you ever heard honesty being the best policy? Yes, and I never believed it for a second. Come on, Betty, don't you want us to get someplace? You want to go on playing dives like this forever? Honey, I do want you to succeed. I don't succeed if you don't. We're a twosome. Well, I don't want you to hold the act together just because of me. Like if you get an offer or you meet a really great guy. How can you be so beautiful and so insecure? You're the one who deserves the offer and the guy. Well, I don't know about deserve him, but I'll grab an umbrella and put on the lashes when I need him. You lost me. Can't be depended upon One day it's sunny Next day the sunshine has gone Love and the weather Always together Planning another surprise Bringing the raindrops Just like the tears to your eyes And an eagle Who's Cupid's pal Is cozy and warm Walks out and kisses a gal right out of the war into a storm. Moonlight advances, love's golden chances. Rain comes along and they're gone. Love and the weather can't be depended upon. Listen, Bob. Call the favor for an old army buddy. We'll go see Frankie's freckled face sisters. Maybe the skies will break, the weather will clear, the love of your life will pop out of a puddle. I'll give you this a cab. Any guy with love close by is cozy and warm. Love walks out and kicks a gal right out of the warm. Into a 
sword. Moonlight advances, love's golden chances. Rain comes along and they're gone. Love and the weather change from night to dawn. Unpredictable, irresponsible, unbelievable, unreliable. Love and the weather cannot be dependent upon. smoke, but you could teach me. Uh, down, boy. Hiya, Philly. Funny bumping into you here. <clears throat> ho, 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 and merry almost Christmas. And welcome to the back room at Jimmy's, where we're proud to introduce Betty and Joni Haynes. Judy. Uh, Judy, the Bain sisters. Haynes. Uh, the Haynes sisters. <laughs> Terrific. We could throw that number right into our new show. I'll tell you this, they sure don't take after Freckleface Haynes, the dog face boy. Especially the one. Yikes. Yeah, that redhead is a real knockout. I was talking with the blonde. Partner, this is why you and me are partners. Oh, come on, a pretty girl like that probably has a whole string of guys waiting for her. That uh, she's probably married. So go find out in some charming roundabout way. Talk to her, Bob. What do you mean, talk to her? They'll be here any second. I invited them for a drink. You what? You think I'm sitting here so I can see more of you? <laughs> well, what am I supposed to do? I won't say be yourself, so try to be relaxed. Be natural. Be natural. Couple of casual questions and ah, here they come. Natural, Bob. Natural. Am I lopsided? You're gorgeous. Just talk to them, Betty. Relax. Be natural. Natural. Hello. <sighs> That was a terrific number. A fantastic number. How do you do? This is my sister Betty, and I'm Judy Haynes. Wallace Davis, Davis Wallace. Oh, we know who you are. 
Sit down, sit down. Have some champagne. Go on, Bob. Don't be shy. Thank you. The formal type. Ah, so here's to looking at you. Cheers. Are you married, Miss Haynes? <laughs> so, you two would be perfect for a new review. You can make a Wednesday rehearsal in Miami. I actually happen to be single without any children, which is to say, why I have no children to speak of. Well, we've got a train to catch. Yeah, it, it was, was so nice of you to sit yeah. down. Sit down. So, rehearsal in Miami. Oh, too bad we have a train of our own to catch tonight. We're booked for the holidays in Pine Tree, Vermont. Vermont? What's that? And what's there? Besides good looking girls. A lot of snow. Frankie wrote us this terrific letter about you two. Oh, so that's how you found out about us. And would you look at that? Frankie has the exact same handwriting as Judy. <laughs> Even the little face on the O's. <laughs> Just a family resemblance. Yeah, the rap side of the family. You're kidding. The minute I got taken, I didn't even see it. Mr. Davis, I'm so sorry. I just Sorry? You were brilliant. Care to dance? Judy, we have a train to catch. Oh, shush. The formal type. Mr. Wallace, I apologize for my sister. Judy didn't do anything wrong. She saw an angle and she worked it. Angle? Sure, she played the percentages and she got what she wanted. Percentages and angles. Isn't that pretty cynical? Oh, come on, Miss Haynes. There's a little bit of larceny in all of us. My sister and I do not play angles. Well, what was that phony letter if not an angle? Excuse me, do you mind if I just enjoy my drink? Please do. Just make sure you drink it from the right angle. Just look at those two. They're crazy about each other. Bob and I should come to Vermont. Join you two on that train tonight. But Bob doesn't want to go to Vermont. We won't tell him he's going. Should be beautiful up there. All that snow. It can't be half as beautiful as this. The best things happen while you're dancing. Things that you would not do at home come naturally on the floor. For dancing soon becomes romancing. When you hold a girl in your arms that you've never held before Even guys with two left feet Come out all right if the girl is sweet If by chance their cheeks should meet While dancing Proving that the best things happen while you
everyone. <laughs> so, how are you two doing? Good. Terrific. Great. Fine. Well, we better get a hoofing partner. We're going to catch that train. Yes, us too. Tell you what, I'll get the tickets and meet you at Grand Central. Don't you worry about a thing. I'll make all the arrangements. You're suddenly pretty eager. We have work to do. Remember work? Well, it was a pleasure, Mr. Davis. I hope we meet again very, very soon. Miss Haynes. Mr. Wallace, I'd wish you a Merry Christmas, but you probably don't believe in that. <laughs> You still sure you want to go through with this? Are you kidding? Why don't get those two together? But won't Bob be angry going to Vermont when he thinks he's headed to Miami? I'll take care of Bob. Track 22? Track 22. <laughs> Skis in Florida? Dream on, pal. <laughs> well, I just don't get it. Tessie said she booked us a drawing room to Miami. Private bar, two warm beds, and a bathroom closer than ten cars away. <laughs> Must have been some kind of snafu with the tickets. Providence! <laughs> this is like traveling in a ration can with Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> These people wearing pretty heavy coats for Florida. Uh, these trains are always cold. Aren't you cold? I'm going to complain to the company. Providence! Providence! Did Pro that guy just say Providence? Oh, Providence, Virginia. It's an old revolutionary town. I think it's where Jefferson came from. <laughs> what? I just keep thinking about those poor girls on their way to Miami. Oh, man. An inn in Vermont. Could be beautiful up there. All that snow. Probably an old grist mill with some chintz curtains. I happen to be very fond of chintz, actually. That little barn out back where they put on their pathetic little shows. Bob, you're psychic. Wow, funny running into you two here. <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. Mr. Wallace, I am so sorry. I had no idea about this until just this minute. So you don't play angles, huh? <laughs> Shut up! Well, I never. This is not an angle. At least it's not my angle. It's my sister's. And I'm very ashamed. Well, you ought to be ashamed. Following us all the way to Florida. Arriving Providence, Providence, Rhode Island. <laughs> Arriving Providence, Rhode Island? I should have known I was being Shanghai back in New Haven, Delaware. Well, you might as well get comfortable, buddy. <laughs> I mean... Just think of it, Vermont. The clean, cold air, the pine trees, or just what we need to wake us up. The snow-covered slope, skiing and shoesing. Steaming hot cocoa. It's true, Mr. Wallace, it's very beautiful up there. Beautiful? It'll be a winter wonderland. Snow! Snow! snow. It won't be long before we'll all be there with snow. Made of snow. snow. Oh, oh, oh. To see a great big man entirely made of snow. Snow. 
Christmas with no with no recommend a little nap go back to sleep go to sleep and dream In December. This is Vermont. We're individuals up here. You promised me there'd be snow. Santa promised me a bunny rabbit, but I never got that either. Hmm. If I wanted a suntan, I would've gone to San Juan. Come on, Herbert. We're going to Saskatchewan. Yeah. yeah. They're predicting a blizzard, you know. I hope you all get stuck in it. Conformists. Martha, Martha, the mail came in. The mail, give me that. We have to hide these bills from your grandfather. Why do we have to hide the bills from Grandpa? Never you mind. Oh, dear. S Susie, excuse me, Susan, don't you have some homework you should be doing? Okay, so I was wrong about the snow. May I help you? No, you can't have your deposit back. Yes, we have plenty of space, and you can have any room in the inn, including mine. Sign right here. Actually, we're not guests. We're your entertainment. Well, your audience just left. You better catch them. They're moving fast. Hot cocoa and shoe sing. I could shoe somebody right now. Clean, cold air, just what we need. Urgh. Wait a second, I know that voice. You're Bob Wallace. Oh, look at that. You see how you touched him? And Phil Davis. Wallace and Davis. Davis and Wallace. What the hell are you two doing in Pine Tree? <laughs> Bring you the fabulous Hain sisters. Just wait till you hear them warble. I'm sorry, but we won't be able to use you girls. We can pay you a for canceling, if you don't mind taking most of it in postage stamps. 
Well, I can still catch the Southbound Express. It was a real pleasure, Miss Haynes. Delighted, Mr. Scrooge. Martha, where the devil is the mail? General Waverly, sir. At ease, man. Yes, yes sir. sir. I said at ease. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How are you, Captain? I'm great, General, but what are you doing here? Well, I happen to own this establishment. What's your excuse? Well, we were telling your wife uh, that... No, 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 no. Anything but that. His wife? You just put ten years on me. This is Martha Watson, my concierge. Concierge. At least he doesn't call me sergeant anymore. You know, he once posted a sign that said, breakfast after calisthenics, oh, 600 hours. To answer the question, your majesty, they brought these gals to sing for the holidays. They're the sisters of Frankie Haynes, sir. Freckle-faced Haynes? The dog-faced boy? Frankie will be so pleased you remembered him. It's a real honor, General. My grandfather is a hero. This is Susie, my granddaughter. She's visiting for the holidays from California. It's Susan, actually. Yes, the smart one in the family. The strongest one, too. What is that? A Gutenberg Bible? I'm writing a report about the American Revolution and New England's where America began. But I really came for the snow. Out of the mouths of you know who. Don't make any personal calls. Martha listens at the switchboard. I do not. I checked the connection. Anyway, I already told you girls we'd have to cancel. Cancel? Why? We've got a stage out in that barn, haven't we? Is something wrong, Captain? No, sir. Just, just, <clears throat> just barn, sir. I mean, we have a stage, but who are they going to sing for? We drafted these girls for the holidays. We will pay them for the holidays. That's very generous, sir, but you really don't Miss have Miss Haynes, to... we are going to have two feet of snow tonight and be full up tomorrow. Is that the forecast? No. It's just pig-headedness. If there's one thing the Army taught me, it's to always be positive, especially when I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, Martha, where's the mail? I'm expecting a letter from Washington. Washington? No, I haven't gotten any letter. You mean this letter. letter, Grandpa? That's the one, Susie. You see, boys, this inn isn't quite a paying proposition yet, and this is my ticket out. I'm going back into the Army. Yes, he misses the food. Anyway, let me show you girls up before a light horse Harry over here puts you on KP. Au revoir, my little mountain flower. Now this is what I call Christmas. Anyway, I wrote my old pal Carlton and applied for active duty. Maybe a training command. Could or... I read the letter for you, Grandpa? Nice and clear, Susie. <clears throat> Dear Hank, why, you dirty old B-A-S-T. <laughs> I'll read that, sweetheart. Thank you. Dear Hank, etc. I got your very amusing letter. You must be turning into a real practical joker, asking for a post at your ripe age. Hmm. The rest is about his family. Doesn't the Army want you back, Grandpa? Not right now, they don't. But you're a hero, Grandpa. You should write a letter to the President and ask him. That's a very good idea, Susie, and you can help me write that letter. Nice to see you, boys. About face, forward march. To the left, 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 right, left, left, left. Poor old guy. It's that bad, huh? He sunk everything into this place. Pension, life savings. I mean, just look at these bills. I haven't had the heart to show him, Dave. He got a letter from the bank that'll make your hair stand up. He doesn't know about it? Would you tell him? When the war was over, there were jobs galore for the G.I. Josephs who were in the war. But for generals, things were not so grand. And it's not so hard to understand. What can you do with the general when he stops being a general? Oh, what can you do with the general who retires? Who's got a job for a general when he stops 
Being a general, they all get a job, but a general no one hires. He walks into an office in answer to an ad. He'll take the job that's offered, the pay is not too bad. They ask his last position, he answers with a punch. I was a general, and they ask him out to lunch. And he has to meet the mob. But he doesn't get the job. Nobody thinks of assigning him when they've stopped whining and dining him. It seems this country never has enjoyed so many one and two and, and three and, and four star generals unemployed. Look, Phil, the general needs some customers. We could work up a few. You mean bribe some of the locals? No, I mean bring the chorus up here and throw out the new show. You know, if you had better legs and personality, I'd marry you. A Wallace and Davis review would really pack the place. I mean, we'd have to talk to the girls. We're hoarding out of their gig. We heard the whole thing, and I think it's a great idea. I think so, too. Great. We'll headline the two of you at the top of the second act. Have you got your charts for the band? Coming right up. Mr. Wallace, there's this local woman here who used to be in show business. She sings and she dances. Good. She can work backstage as a dresser. Meanwhile, give me long distance. I need to call New York. Aye, aye, Captain. That's Navy. So court-martial me. New York? What for? Ralph Sheldrake. He's the contact for the 151st. We get him to send some letters out to the guys, bring them and their families up here for Christmas, buck up the old man. Do you know I call that? A million-dollar million dollar proposition. We'll take the job of assigning him. Let's start whining and dining him. Because this country never has enjoyed. So many, one and two and three and four star generals unemployed. But we've got a job for a general who's retired. like show business like what are you doing <laughs> you scared the life out of me where'd you get that silly hat never mind now come on we gotta set up for rehearsal but this is where i work on my history report the american revolution will still be here tomorrow now come on we got show folks coming any minute grandpa says show business is frivolous frivolous do you know what patrick henry said give me liberty or give me death and do you know where he said it where on stage at the winter garden theater class dismissed <laughs> Ezekiel! Ezekiel Foster! Yep. Could you turn some lights on for me? Yep. <laughs> Who is he? He came with the barn. <laughs> well, it's a barn, all right. Mr. Wallace, the barn is my classroom. Wait a moment. Do I smell a piano in this classroom? Ah, uh, I do. Edouard de Steinway, number five. Mr. Davis, you didn't really smell the piano. I can detect a spinet at 50 feet. Don't confuse the child. Mr. Wallace, so this local woman who was in show business, she not only sings and dances, but... Uh, tell her to send us a picture. We'll certainly consider her. I can't believe we're performing in an actual barn. You look better in a barn than most girls look in a Chanel gown. Must be all this clean, cold air. Maybe it isn't the clean, cold air. You mean? Oh, I mean. Oh, I mean. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, they sure seem to be getting along. Unlike us, you mean? No, I only meant... Well, yes, unlike us. But I thought you and Mr. I might... Mr. Wallace, there's no need to be polite. <laughs> Phil and Judy are... <laughs> Phil and Judy. Yeah, they're Phil and Judy. 
And you and I are. Bob and Betty. Exactly. We're Bob and Betty. Sometimes the twain wasn't meant to meet. Sometimes the twain doesn't get out of the station. <laughs> I think I stepped in something. All right, people, calm down, calm down. People, people, calm down, calm down. I've got rehearsal schedules for the course. I've got three sets of scene breakdowns. They're labeled A, B, and C. Let's pass them out now. Mike, Mike, calm down. It's just a show. Just a show? Mr. Wallace, do you realize you are attempting to stage a Broadway extravaganza in five days and that the stage manager's office is a pigsty? And I mean a real sty with an actual pig? We'll work him to the finale. Uh, for now, I want you to meet Betty and Judy Haynes. This is Mike Nolte, stage manager. Hi. Hello. And this is the rest of the cast. Silly, silly, oh. Hey, hey, it's the Bobsy Twins. It's a good thing I forgot my woolens, given how sultry it is up here. As if it ain't hot enough with Billy Dilly around. I was hot all the way up just thinking about you, Phil. But it ain't the heat. It's the humidity! humidity. <laughs> Hi. Pardon my innuendo, but who's she? I'm sorry. Judy Haynes, Rita, Rhoda. Ruda Roder, hello. <laughs> Tom, then sure. As am I. Well, that makes two of us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, kids, we're doing the show Christmas Eve. It's just around the corner, so we've got to hustle. Scooter, give me a chord. Me, me, mama, woo. Be, me, papa, foo. Be ba ba boo, ha 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 ha. Me be ba ba boo, be ba ba boo, be ba ba boo, ha ha. Attention! What the devil is all this racket in here? The Broadway Battalion, sir, reporting for Christmas duty. Captain, what are all these troops? Uh, we call it a cast, sir. You see, the Haynes sisters gave us a spot in their act, so we invited up a few volunteers. A few volunteers? This is half the population of Vermont. Show folks, you know. No, I don't know. I don't know anything about show business. Listen, if you two are worried about a certain innkeeper, we don't need any charity. Oh, this isn't charity, sir, just standard operating procedure. Well, as I said, I don't know anything about show business. We all have our gifts. I would never have been any good as a general. You were never any good as a private. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, I expect you all to follow procedure. Police the barn and perimeter. Rules for the fire squad are posted. Laundry detail can report to Mrs. Watson. Lights out at 2,200 hours. Your command, Captain. Proceed. Wow, no wonder we'll win in the war with Germany. Rhoda, we won the war with Germany. Oh, good. Mr. Wallace, so this woman who was in show business, she was in Walter Winchell's column 15 times. Uh, keep her on call, Martha. Sardis once put her picture up in the ladies' room. Maybe we can use her for the late show. Ethel Merman once told her, honey, you are loud. And do you know how loud that woman was? How loud? I'm glad you asked that, Senator. Scooter, hit it. <laughs> what care I? Who makes the laws of the nation? Let those who will take care of its rights and wrongs. What care I who cares for the world's affairs as long as I can sing its popular songs? I know that voice. Martha, the megaphone Watson. <laughs> Six flops in a row on Great Wide Way. You stopped the show and whoop de doo Now stand back, Pine Tree. Watson's back in town. Let me sing a funny song. 
with crazy words that roll along. And if my song can start you laughing, I'm happy, happy. Let me sing a sad refrain of broken hearts who loved in vain. And if my song can start you crying, I'm happy. Let me croon on the down blues to lift you out of your seats. If my song can reach your shoes and start you tap with your feet, I'm happy. Let me sing of Dixie. Charms, the Swanee Shore and Mother's Arms. And if my song can make you homesick, I'm happy. Just give me a follow spot. That's all I ask. I'm like a sunflower. Put a light on me, and I turn. Ezekiel, hit me with some purple footlights. I'm young again. Now drop me a show curtain as gaudy as all get out. Voila. Now give me a top hat I can waggle and a magic wand of a cane. Tap your feet, I'm happy. Let me sing of the sea's charts, the swampy shore, and mother's arms. And if my song can make you homesick, can start you laughing, can start you crying. Somebody get this lady a costume. Costume? I want a two-year contract. Hey, Zeke, close me up. Catch you later, Philly. I'll be the one wearing next to nothing. Oh, Philly Dilly, oh. <sighs> Judy, those girls are my cousins. Oh, we went to kindergarten together. <laughs> All right, you kids are gonna be staying in the ski lodge. Which way is the ski lodge? I'm glad you asked that, Senator. Dear God, please, please bless Grandpa this Christmas and bless Mommy and Daddy and the state of California, especially Pasadena. But remember to bless Grandpa most of all. I'll even give up snow, though frankly I'd rather not. Amen. Say, Miss Susan, what are you doing up? It's bedtime. It's all right, Mr. Wallace. I'm on Pacific time. I'm three hours behind. <laughs> Your Grandpa put you on military time if you don't get some sleep. Come on. I haven't been sleeping so well in Vermont anyway. Why is that? You homesick? You got something on your mind? No, nothing. Just the usual day-to-day -day concerns and stuff. Those day-to-day -day concerns are real killers. Mr. Wallace, is Grandpa really going back into the Army? I don't know. 
He might sometime. Can I go into the army with him? You could sure volunteer, but you might be on the short side. Mr. Wallace, is Grandpa very unhappy? You know, Susan, I think he is. I wish I could find a way to help him. Oh, I love him so much, Mr. Wallace. Just tell him. Maybe that's all the help he needs. I want to tell him. I almost did today, but I'm, I'm kind of scared of him. <laughs> Don't feel bad. He used to scare 6,000 grown men at a time. <laughs> now, come on, let's go get some shut-eye. But how can I? All I think about is Grandpa. It's simple. Try the new Bob Wallace method. When I'm worried and I can't sleep, I count my blessings instead of sheep. And I'll fall asleep counting my blessings. When my bank holes get small, I think of when I had none at all. And I fall asleep. Counting my blessings I think about a nursery And I picture girly heads And one by one I count them As they slumber in their beds If you're worried that you can't sleep Just count your blessings instead of sheep, and you'll fall asleep. Count me your blessings. Susan. Thank you, Mr. Wallace. Good night, Captain. Another insomniac. <laughs> Seems to be a whole club of us out here. It was very beautiful what you told her. Just common sense is all. You can't take a compliment, can you? Uh, nope, never could. Bob, I think you're coming out here and trying to help out the general. I think it's one of the most decent and unselfish things I've ever seen. <laughs> Talk about decent, try the old man. I once saw him lift a guy out of a burning jeep and run 50 yards with him under fire. And I'm just a piker compared to that. You don't really believe all that about larceny, do you? Put up a good show, though. <laughs> Old habits, I guess. See where I grew up, larceny was the only thing going around. Then I went to the army and I found out different. I met guys like the general. Guys who put their lives on the line for you, no questions asked. I found that in show business. Those kids who came out here today. A bunch of big hearts, all right. Well, I better get some sleep, if I can. Uh, it's very simple. Just try the new Betty Haynes method. my blessings instead of sheep and I fall asleep counting my blessings If you're worried and you can't sleep just count your blessings instead of sheep and you'll fall asleep counting your blessings the mess hall. Sullivan Show. Yes, Miss Clooney, I'll connect you. Good morning, The Ed Sullivan Show. Jose Jimenez? One moment, Senor Jimenez. 
Good morning, the Ed Sullivan Show. I'm sorry, Miss Kilgallen, but Mr. Sullivan's on another line. Good morning, the Ed Sullivan Show. Let me get this straight, Mr. Banks. Your client refuses to go on after Topo Gigio, the lovable Italian mouse. Mr. Banks, may I remind you that Topo Gigio is an American institution. May I also remind you that your client is Slinky the Seal. He juggles balls and catches fish, and to be perfectly frank, doesn't know a thing about comedy. Well, will he follow Senor Wentes in this talking box? All right, all right. I'll talk to Topo. You talk to Slinky. We'll talk. Goodbye. Martha? Yes, Mr. Sheldrake? I'm sorry, I always mess up your name. Would you send a message to the Bob for me? Man, I gotta start thinking, not stop talking about this. Can you send the letters out to those guys from the 151st about going up to this inn for Christmas? Yes, sir. Great, you're a peach. Now, can you get me the Columbian Inn? I need Bob Walsh on the line. Good morning, Columbia Inn. Weather? Yes, we have plenty of weather. Come on up and see it. <laughs> Good morning, Columbia Inn. Do we have entertainment? And if my song... Hello? Hello? Good morning, Columbia Inn. Morning, Captain Wallace. This isn't Captain Wallace. This is Martha Watson. Martha Washington? Watson. Watson. Oh, good. I didn't think I was quite that old. Neither did I. Say, Martha, this is Ralph Sheldrake in New York. Oh. Would you mind passing a message to Bob Walls for me? Just tell him our little secret scheme is going great. Secret scheme? About this inn up there. Here's the deal. The company's ready to come up and take it over. Christmas Eve. A company's taking over the inn? The whole division's been alerted. The old man will never know what hit him. Say this to Bob. It's a million dollar proposition. A million dollars? But Mr. Sheldrake, I don't understand. Bob will know what I mean. Say, Martha, keep this on the QT, will you? Yes, but Mr. Sheldrake. Great. You're a peach. Bob's got a company? He's trying to buy up the inn. Drop. Can we please lift this drop? People, people! Ezekiel, Ezekiel Foster! Yep. Do you realize we are in a crisis? Yep. A five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Morning, Mike. Did I hear something about a crisis? Put up a show in five days. Why not? They said God took a week. Everything's faster now. People, people! One more time. Morning, sweetheart. Are we friends again? I didn't know we ever stopped. Oh, Philly Dilly! But don't push your luck. <laughs> Hiya, Phil. We come up with some new costumes for the show. What do you think? Girls, we gotta keep the show family friendly. We already thought of that. How's this for the kids? What well, bells? Ding dong, ding dong. <laughs> I'm gonna go talk to wardrobe. <laughs> <clears throat> Wardrobe's that way. Morning. Morning. People, people! Good morning. You look bright-eyed. I guess you could say Santa came early this year. If you mean Santa Bob Wallace, it couldn't have happened to a nicer girl. We had a long talk last night. 
Judy, I didn't think they made guys like that anymore. Happy holidays, sister. Huh? Thanks. Betty, I have a telegram for you. It's from New York. For me? Quite a day. From the Regency Room at the Imperial. Stop. Solo engagement. You name the terms. Stop. Signed. What are you waiting for? For the Regency Room. What, did you hold it up to the light? Please, that's for amateurs. I use steam. Five minutes, ladies, five minutes. People, people, five. It's too bad you'd have to give up Pine Tree to take this job. Are you gonna take this job? What? And give up Pine Tree? You are so honorable. It's too bad not everyone around here is as honorable as you are. Anybody in particular? Well, I shouldn't say anything. But I got a call from Mr. Sheldrake, a friend of Bob's. Sounded like some big real estate man. Betty, they're scheming to buy up the inn. They're what? Our secret scheme is going great, he says. Says they've got a company all ready to take over the inn. On Christmas Eve, no less. The old man will never know what hit him. And then he says it's a million dollar proposition and he swears me to silence. That's not possible. They're not even gonna warn the old coot. Just kick him in the drawers. Bob wanted to be involved in something like that. I mean, if I'm wrong, then I'll resign as president from the New England chapter of Busy Bodies Anonymous. Martha! Grandpa found all the bills you've been hiding. Is he angry? Oh boy, I'm in trouble now. What are we going to do? Honey, right now there's only one honorable thing we can do. We're gonna hide. Can we lift this drop? Can we please lift this drop? Ezekiel! Ezekiel Foster! Morning, Betty. How'd you sleep? I didn't get a wink myself. One of the best nights of my life. Hey, what's wrong? You got a message from a Mr. Sheldrake. Seems your secret scheme is working out. Beautiful, beautiful. A million dollar idea, huh? Million dollar proposition. That's old Ralphie. Boy, how's this for a little angle? Brilliant. This ought to help out the old man. Help him. Is that what you call it? Sure, this will take the load right off of him. A little bit of larceny in all of us. <laughs> this will put larceny out of business. Say, you'll keep this under your lid, won't you? I can't believe you'd have the gall to... Excuse me. Say, what is all this? Oh, don't let me interfere with this business plans of the great Bob Wallace. But I have a telegram to get to. <laughs> Say, this is about last night. I'd rather not discuss last night. It was just a little kiss, nothing to feel guilty about. Look who's talking about guilt. Is there something I should feel guilty about? Are we done here? Is that all, Mr. Wallace? Yes, that's all, Miss Haynes. Martha! Martha! Where the devil is that woman? Places, people, places. Is everyone in costume? Hey, places Mr. for the Wallace? Your number, Mr. Wallace. Phil, have you ever figured out women? Yeah, they have longer hair and they're smarter than we are. Next question. Uh, forget it. Uh, seems that Ralph got the letter sent out to the guys. We're solid. Great. Okay, boys and girls. Now here we go. Now lift this drop! <laughs> Are you as blue, just as blue as I could be? Every day was a cloudy day for me. Then good luck came a knocking at my door. Skies were gray, but they're not gray anymore. sky smiling at me nothing but blue skies do I see blue birds singing a song nothing but blue birds all day long never saw the sun Shining so bright, 
never saw things going so right. Noticing the days hurrying by when you're in love, my how they fly through days, all of them gone. Nothing but blue skies from now on.
As a child, I went wild when a band played. How I ran to the man when his hand swayed. Clarinets were my pets. And my sly trombone, I thought, were simply divine. But today, when they play, I could hiss them. Every bar is a jar to my system. But there's one musical instrument that I call mine. I love a piano, I love a piano, I love to hear somebody play. Upon a piano, a grand piano, it simply carries me away. I know a fine way to treat a stein way. I love to run my fingers or the keys, the ivories, and with the pedal. I love to meddle, not only music from Broadway. I'm so delighted if I'm invited to hear a long-haired genius play. So you can keep your fiddle and your bow, give, give me a P-I-A-N-O-O-O. -O -O. I love to stop right beside an upright. Or a high-toned baby grand.
this. Can I be in the show? I've been watching and it doesn't look too hard. Susie. I mean Susan. Susie's fine. Or if you want, you can call me Broadway Sue. Susie, the casting came. We've got each other in the room 10 minutes. Oh, that's right. So, Mr. Davis, can I be in the show? Broadway Sue, don't you have a history report to write? What, and give up show business? Don't forget, this is my grandfather's barn. You're not a performer. You're a producer. What does a producer do? Anything they want. But first, do their homework. Go on, Broadway Sue. Show's over. I like your costume, Susie. A lot of good it did me. Guess I'll go to my dressing room and have a scene. <laughs> ten minutes, ten glorious minutes. Set up for Betty and Judy's number. Shazam, how about Sorry, Phil. No chance. You're already taken. Oops. Oh. <laughs> taken? What do you mean, taken? <laughs> they mean taken. As in taken. I know what taken means. I'm just wondering what taken really means. Taken. Why don't you forget about this little word, taken, and remember us? And me? Remember me? Your little mountain flower? Yes, 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 I mean yes! Listen, Judy, I think we need some times apart. We're stuck in a barn in Vermont. <laughs> Judy, I think you need to go talk to Betty. She's packing for New York. Packing? Why? You know I have me a free man. Uh-oh. You and I will talk later on. Excuse me. Uh-oh. Martha! Uh-oh. Martha! I'm still waiting about an explanation for these bills. You know, that was quite a mess you left me. I should have made you clean it up. I'm still waiting. I did it for your own good. That's my explanation. Because I thought if I got this place out of the red, I could get you into the pink again. And if that's not a good enough explanation for you, then you can shove it up your vacuum cleaner and turn it on high. Say, what's going on today? Nothing. Nothing. Uh-uh. Hey, yup. <laughs> Mr. Foster, may I have a word with you? And please do not say, uh, yep. I'm used to a union crew, a Broadway theater, and a professional staff. Instead, I have hay where it doesn't belong, and Mr. Pig, my office mate, just ate the finale. Don't just stand there, do something. you'd understand. Without any explanation? It's something I was told in confidence. Oh, so you can't break a confidence, but you can go off and play the Regency Room. It's a big break. I'm glad you got it, but whatever happened to Miss Honesty is the best policy. Did she turn into Mussolini all of a sudden? Honey, it just breaks my heart. Aren't you in love with Bob? I thought I was. What did he do to make you turn away like this? Let's just say Bob isn't the man I thought he was. What man ever is? He just got my hopes up. Bob is the most decent guy on earth, unlike his partner. All right, Betty, what's this up here about Stephen? It's about Bob and Betty, and maybe Phil and Judy, too. Well, that's what happens when you get involved with the song and dance man. You get a song and a dance. I learned that from the 23 horn players I went out with. <laughs> Scum. Every last one of them. I'd go with you, Betty, but I kind of want to stick around here and tear Phil's head off. Well, I say congratulations. <laughs> 
congratulations. This is America. Sisters, celebrate your freedom. All you've got to lose is your girdles. Crocodile tears will not be shed. They're not for a lady like mine. I can recall what my aunt said when she married for the 20th time. Fallen out of luck be fun. After love is over and done. It's an awful blow, but although it's upsetting, so much you can do while you're forgetting. Falling out of love can be fun. Be fun. Be fun. Be fun. When you find your lover has gone. figure number right now. Oh, so he's demanding our presence now. Isn't that just like a man? Susie, go tell Bob to take a long walk off a high ski jump. Okay. When you find your love in romance, get a sudden kick in the pants. Get yourself surrounded and bounded with lots of men. Ladies, have any of you seen the Haynes sisters? No, sorry. Bob, I have looked everywhere. Their room, the game room, the ladies room, the milking room. I cannot find them anywhere. Betty and Judy Haynes. I could turn her into an opera. Just add a title. Look, girls, uh, do you know this routine? No. Well, partner, looks like we don't have any other choice. Do you think what I think you mean? <laughs> Ezekiel hit me with number 17, surprise pink. Oh, no, not surprise pink. Sisters, sisters, there were never such devoted sisters. Never had to have a chaperone, no sir. I'm there to keep my eye on her. Caring, sharing, every little thing that we are 
are wearing when a certain gentleman arrived from Rome. She wore the dress and I stayed home. All kinds of weather we stick together, the same in the rain or sun. Two different faces, but in tight places we think and we act as one. Uh -huh. Try to split us up, but no one can. Lord, help the mister who comes between me and my sister. And Lord, help the sister who comes between me and my man. Sister, ever loving sister. Remember when you told me to have fun? Yeah. Well, I'm having it. Sister, don't come between me and my man. At ease. Uh, yeah. uh, General, I'm uh, uh, just testing out the fan. We're not really in this number. <laughs> he made me do it. The union rules. Uh-huh. Mr. Wallace, I have a secret I can't tell you. Do you want to tell me the secret now or later? Betty just left for New York. Judy drove her to the station. <laughs> New York? What for? She thinks you're not the man she thought you were. But I bet she'd reconsider. So that's what she thinks, huh? Meantime, she said you should walk off the ski jump. Actually, Captain, Miss Haynes got a telegram. What did it say, Bob Wallace and the man you thought he was? Leave town? Well, I took the liberty of, um, borrowing the wire. Have a look for yourself. The Regency Room. Well, I like that. Dumping Vermont for the big time. Captain, I believe you're making a tactical error. All that high-minded talk. What a lot of guff. She must have just gotten confused somehow. Bob, one of the jobs of a commanding officer is learning how to assess people. And in my assessment of Miss Haynes, she hasn't an ounce of guff in her. There must have been some kind of misunderstanding. You love her. I'm sure she's in love with you. And I think if you don't go off and chase her, then you are a damn fool. I think so, too. Uh, could you arrange me a car for New York? There's already one waiting outside. <laughs> Sister, you're a prize. Wait till you hear me sing. Later, Susan. Good luck, buddy. Have a safe trip, Captain. Ladies and gentlemen, the Regency Room at Manhattan's Imperial Hotel wishes you the happiest of holiday seasons. And now, in her first solo New York engagement, Miss Elizabeth Haynes. Right by me, 
song for you. Thanks. It's taken from life. Excuse me. Betty, uh, I, I'm pretty confused, to tell you the truth. Look, I already talked it all over with Judy. Oh, what about talking it over with me? Or with Phil? What about the cast you left up in a lurch in Vermont? You wouldn't want people to think you're underhanded, would you? Underhanded? Talk about underhanded? That's a pretty mysterious remark. I'm so angry with you, I can't even... Look, if I said it did something wrong, I'd like to set it right. I just don't know what it is. If you don't know, I can't explain it. Now I'm totally lost. Evening, Bob. It's a good thing I ran into you. Glad you could make it. Betty, this is Ralph Sheldrake. Mr. Sheldrake, I've heard so much about you. I'm sure glad Bob called me in to see your act. Wow. You are TNT, Miss Haynes. Ralph and I were in the army together. Now he works for the Ed Sullivan Show. The Ed Sullivan Show? I thought you were in real estate. No, I'm only a humble TV producer. Anyway, I just got off the phone with Ed. He wants to book you on the show. How's that for a million dollar proposition? A million dollar proposition? Folks out there will never know what hit him. But look, Bob, I've only got responses from half the guys. I think our letters must have gotten stuck in holiday mail. That's a tough break. Uh, say, do you think Ed would give me a spot in a show tomorrow? Sure. I think I can cut Kate Smith down to three courses of God Bless America. I'm sorry, you're not in real estate? No, I'm not. And Bob, you called him in to see my show even though I left yours. Look, you're good, that's all I know. If a solo act is what you want, then take it. But say, I've got a scoop. Ralph, see you in the studio. Betty, good luck. Take care. How about that? Star like Bob Wells, helping out the general. We sent out 600 letters trying to set this thing up. Mr. Sheldrick, we have a few things to talk about. <laughs>
hear that song? Will Fall, the old man, wherever he wants to go. We in the 151st used to sing that song to General Henry Waverly. And I'm here with a call tonight to the 151st. You see, the general could use some company this Christmas. And I know it's asking a lot, bringing up your family to Vermont for the holidays, but the way I remember it, that's what Christmas is all about. And a lot of us wouldn't be alive today if we weren't for the general. So we'd be giving just about the best gift we could to the greatest guy we'll ever know. Because we love him, we love him, especially when he keeps us on the ball. in these shoes. Are you sure it's the shoes? <laughs> Is the gown ready? You fix the gown. Of course. Any word from Bob yet? Not a thing. This hotel said that you left New York in the middle of the night. Well, it's got three hours till showtime. Bob! Uh, holiday traffic, folks. Happy Christmas Eve. Any luck, Bob? Did you see Betty? Yeah, I saw her all right. Yes? And? What happened? I couldn't budge her. She won't come back. And I just don't get it. Oh, I'm sorry, Bob. Anyway, how are things looking here? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. What's that mean? I hope it's not obscene. It's where the engagement ring is gonna go. Right there. <laughs> she got me drunk, clubbed me over the head. Next thing I knew, boom. <laughs> things sure happen fast in Vermont. Yeah. We're renaming it the Sunshine State. Well, that's terrific, you two. Uh, congratulations. Mr. Wallace, Mr. Davis, I've been working on my number. Okay, Susie, you beat us into submission. Show us your number. Stand back, Pine Tree. Susan's back in town. <laughs> Hit me with those footlights. Who I be young again? Now get me a show curtain as gaudy as I'll get out. Voila! I'm happy. Let me sing a Dixie star, Swanee shore, and mother's arms. And if my song can make you homesick, can start you laughing, can start you crying. Tell you she was terrific? As her manager, I'd man six figures. No, 12 <laughs> figures. Martha! There's the old man, Martha, don't forget. I know, Operation Uniform. Front and center, Miss Watson, I want to talk to you. You know what your problem is, Grandpa? You need to learn to count your blessings instead of your sheep. And you'll be happy. This whole place has gone insane. Martha, where are all my suits? I sent them to the cleaners. All of them? On Christmas Eve? Don't you worry. You can wear your uniform tonight. No, I will not wear my uniform. Well, then you'll wear your undershorts. And you'll make quite a picture. Folks won't be able to tell you from the Christmas tree stand. You know, I got along very well in the army without you. Yes, but it took 17,000 men to take my place. And you're wearing your uniform tonight. You know what you're acting like right now? You're acting like a wife. Well, I've had enough practice. We fight all the time, and we never have sex. <laughs> People think we are married. <laughs> uh, 
Ezekiel. Martha. Zeke. And God bless us, blah, blah, blah. I've been hearing that all day. Got a package for Mr. Wallace. And a special delivery for you, sir, from Washington, D.C. From Washington? Yup, the White House. This one right there in the corner. Don't see too many of those. Better let it fire tonight. Happy holidays. Bah, humbug. Good Lord. What? The Pentagon found that tank you stole? They want me back. The President's pulled the strings. I can ship out after the holidays. Henry, that's wonderful. I'm so glad for you. I'm really so glad. I just hope that you can... Now you're not gonna cry on me, are you? No, I'm not going to cry. My astigmatism acting up. Now don't you see? You can wear your uniform tonight after all. I don't know where all the medals are. I'll find them. You are absolutely hopeless, I swear. Can you get this to Bob? Okay, all you Christmas elves, we've done it. We put up a show in five days, and I always knew we could do it. I never doubted us for a second, and we did it by remaining calm. For me? <laughs> yup, a gallon of our maple syrup. That ought to sweeten your pancakes. <laughs> I'm moving to Vermont. Merry <laughs> Christmas, old man. Likewise, buddy, likewise. Aw, oh, toboggan. Look, Phil. You were right not so long ago about putting some romance in my life. I had a great shot with Betty, and I still don't know how I blew it. You still haven't opened that? What is it? I don't know. Just said four Bob. See you again. Merry Christmas, Betty. Merry Christmas, Bob. How much do I love you? How much do I love you? I'll tell you no I'll tell lie. You no lie. How deep is the ocean? How high is the sky? I just want to sit in the audience like any normal person. Soldiers, attention! Because we love him, we love him, especially when he keeps us on the ball. And we'll tell the kiddies we answer to these calls with the grandest son of a soldier. 51st Division salutes you. 
At ease. Corporal Sanchez. Lieutenant Boyle. And isn't that Frankie... D uh, Frankie Haynes, sir. He flew in from Fairbanks this morning. The dog face. <laughs> Haynes, you look good as ever. And so, here we are. Christmas Eve, 1954. And isn't this a fine gift? Trying to give an old soldier a taste of his former glory. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I do have some news for you. President Eisenhower has invited me back to active duty, back into the noblest profession that I know. Well, backwards is a way a soldier does not go. And the truth is, I'm not a soldier anymore. I'm an innkeeper, a proud innkeeper, but a very bad innkeeper. <laughs> With all the chance for glory I needed right here in Pine Tree, and I didn't even see it. My superior, Miss Martha Watson, will tell you I once set breakfast for 0600 hours. Well, from now on, it will be breakfast all day and waffles all night. Beds will not be made. Calisthenics are strictly forbidden. And anyone who calls me sir instead of Hank will be tossed out on their can. You see, I learned something today that I didn't know even yesterday. If you're worried and you can't sleep, just count your blessings instead of sheep. And you'll fall asleep counting your blessings. The last time I saw your faces, you were all boys. But here you are with your wives and children, and it's a grand sight. My friends, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, sir. What was that again? Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, Hank. And what was that again? Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, Hank. Dismissed. Or as they say in the theater, on with the show. Just like the ones I used to know. If you know the words, sing along. I'll try it again from the top. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Just like the ones I used to know. Where the treetops listen.
Keep 